wish there was a way that you could write a number without having to write the same number being multiplied by itself over and over and over again. Wait a minute. There is, isn't there? It's called exponents. Yeah, if I just use an exponent, I know that I can just count up how many times I'm multiplying the same number by itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And put that little number in the upper right hand corner of my base. This is telling me that I'm multiplying three by itself seven times. Well, that was easy. All right, so what happens when we see something like this? Three to the second power times three to the third. Why aren't we multiplying really the same number? What does three to the second power actually mean? And what does three to the third power actually mean? Well, three to the second power means that we're multiplying by the number three two times. And three to the third power well, that means we're multiplying by the number three, three times. So what does this thing look like? I guess it looks like this. Three times three, that's the first part. And then we're multiplying that by three times three times three. That's the second part. Well, how many times are we multiplying three together? One, two, three, four, five. Looks like five times. So really, we could use an exponent again, just like we talked about before. So this is going to be 3 to the 5th power. So we could say that 3 to the 2nd power times 3 to the 3rd power is equivalent to 3 to the 5th power. Alright, so exponents are a piece of cake. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Or are they? I've got a negative exponent. What the heck does that mean? Well, negative exponents means that we're going to have a decimal number. So this number is not going to get bigger. It's actually going to become smaller and be a decimal. Well, one thing that I've got to remember is that decimals are the same thing as fractions. They just look a little bit different. And I know that I can turn this 3 to the negative second power into a fraction by just putting it over 1. You could take any number and turn it into a fraction by just putting one underneath it. But how the heck do I change this thing so I know what fraction or what decimal I actually have? Well, I'm going to change it into a fraction, which we did, by putting one underneath it, and then take the reciprocal. Because if we take the reciprocal, what that's going to do is it's going to change our exponent to the opposite. I don't want to have a, a negative exponent because really I don't know what to do with it. So if I take the reciprocal, that means the fraction flips. So 1 becomes the numerator, 3 becomes the denominator, and the negative second power becomes positive second. And now it's a little bit more familiar to us. So we could say that 3 to the negative second power over 1 is equivalent to 1 over 3 to the second power. There you go. Well, what else is 1 over 3 to the second power equivalent to? Hmm. Well, 3 to the second power is just 3 being multiplied by itself two times. So I guess I could write it as a multiplication problem. 1 over 3 times 3. That also means that I could multiply those two numbers together. 3 times 3 is 9. So I could have the final answer of 1 ninth. That's a fraction that we're used to seeing. And if we have a fraction that we're used to seeing, then hey, a fraction can be a decimal as well. All right, now that we're through with that, let's go on to the next level. What happens when we see a negative exponent and it's already a fraction for us? It already looks like a fraction. I've got a one as my numerator and underneath I've got this time two to the negative third power. Well, it's already a fraction. I want to get it back 
so that I don't have a negative exponent. Let's do that reciprocal again. Yeah, let's take the reciprocal. If I take the reciprocal, I know that one over two to the negative third is equivalent, it's equal to, two to the third power over one. I know that's gonna be equivalent to the multiplication problem of two times two times two, or two times two times two over one. We could write it either way. I don't have to put it over one if I don't want to. And finally, I know that that is gonna be equivalent to two times two, which is four times two, which is going to be the number eight. And so this time we end up with a whole number as an answer that's equivalent to what we started with. And what we started with was a fraction that had a denominator with a negative exponent. How about that?